Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. This week is an invert spotlight and I want to talk about the zebra nerite snail. Now it's most commonly called Neratina natalensis for its Latin name, but I have a feeling that that's not accurate as Neratina natalensis actually come from Southeast Africa and the vast majority of species imported into the U.S. at least and the vast majority of those imported into the U.S. actually come from Asia, so they may be near Tina Parallela, but I don't really know. Regardless, it's easy to tell which one is a zebra near it by its appearance, no matter what its Latin nomenclature is. I think these are without a doubt one of the best algae solutions for a nanotank and a planet tank. They are beautiful, long-lived, and exceptionally efficient. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. So as you can see, these guys are quite attractive. Um, that stripy shell is very striking, and as long as you keep them in a tank that has a decent amount of hardness, it retains its integrity. Now if you keep them in a soft water tank, the shell will erode over time, getting white patches, and it can actually erode the whole way through. Now I find with nearite snails, because their shells are so thick, this takes a very long time and is mainly cosmetic. They have super thick and heavy shells, and this is because where they're found in, in freshwater pools and streams, they climb out of the water onto the rocks and graze on the algae that's found there. And their patterning has developed over time in order for them to blend into the various rocks that they climb on, and this helps them not be predated on by birds, and it also saves them from various crabs. Now, they also have a very thick operculum, which is sort of the, the fingernail that closes their body. And that has a jointed piece that allows them to close extremely tightly. And that also protects them from predation. This is the adult size, which is about the diameter of a quarter. These guys are completely peaceful and they are a sexually specific snail, meaning there are males and females. Now how to sex them is beyond me. I know of no definitive way to do so. The best part about these guys is they are not only exceptional algae eaters, but they don't complete their life cycle in freshwater, which means if you add one snail to a tank, you only ever have one snail. They do lay eggs, which look sort of like little sesame seeds, and I'll show you guys those in a moment. But they have a planktonic larval stage, so the eggs hatch and release little veligers, which are little larvae, and those will not develop in fresh water. Nearite snails are extremely slow growing and can live for several years. They graze on algae by scraping it with their radula. So while they are very good algae eaters, I wouldn't say that they're nearly as good as uh, an algae scraper or razor blade for actually clearing the glass. However, they can make quite a dent. You can see the little tooth-like structures in this snail's mouth that they use to scrape the algae. Now, unlike many other algae eaters, these guys are suitable to small tanks. However, it is important that you don't overstock them so that they don't starve as they are very difficult to supplement. I generally recommend one per two and a half gallons of tank space maximum for an established tank or one per five gallons of tank space for a new setup, meaning one that's only you know several weeks to several months old. Now in the wild, since these guys are from streams and pools, there's generally a decent amount of oxygen content. And you may find that they don't do quite as well in the low flow, low oxygen setups. But I really think the biggest obstacle most folks have with these snails is that they put them too densely stocked and in too immature of a tank. So these are what the nearite snail eggs look like. It's pretty unsightly. You can scrape them off with a razor blade. Now I think it's important to mention that these particular eggs were not laid by zebra nearites. They were laid by olive nearites, which are a U.S. native and extremely inexpensive and popular in the hobby. I find them to lay more eggs than any other species. The zebra seem to lay quite sparingly. However, it's important to remember as well that laying eggs is a sign of health because it means they're eating well. 
Now I like to have nearites spread throughout my entire fish room. I think it's especially important as a retailer that I don't crowd them all into one tank because I want them to be as healthy and vital as possible when I ship them out to my customers, which means they're in pretty much every tank in the fish room. Again, I just think that they're a really beautiful, useful addition to a planted aquarium or really any aquarium. In fact, they can even be stocked with a lot of cichlids as they don't have particularly visible antenna that the fish confuse with worms. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my Species Spotlight. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things now. As always, let me know below if you guys have any comments, suggestions, or questions.